Hello guys and welcome back to the Isle of Wight. I hope you're all well and you're keeping safe. Let's go back to last time where we worked on this area here, the British Village High Street. So this was carrying on from the inspiration I guess from Press's last village build and I wanted to try and create something a little bit more on the busier side I guess by having more of a sort of a village town centre and when I say town centre it's pretty much just a couple of shops and in this case we put down a church and a little community centre alongside many many pubs which is quite iconic when you're looking around the countryside in the UK so I think this worked out really really nicely and it's gave us some great foundations to moving on from here onwards and that's what we're going to be working on today we're going to carry on this area we're going to move a bit more towards some of the newer estates that have been built on top of this village area so sort of imagine the sense that this is the original part of the village and it's just expanded onwards from that so that's going to be today's main concentration area is working on that so let's jump straight in so the area we're going to work on is just above where we've already done already so the this little area here i think is going to be perfect for what i have in mind and as you saw from the title seconds ago we're going to be trying to create a uk traditional looking park here now I've done this in the past many times before, but there have been so many more amazing assets for parks, etc., that we can really utilize into this build. So I'm gonna certainly do that today and try my best to make this look a little bit more realistic. The issue that I have here is, as you may have noticed already, there's a bit of a height terrain difference between the um, the land where I want to build this park. So it's gonna take a bit of, bit of jiggling around to get that to work and look nicely. Um, and also today I want to work quite a lot more on detailing these houses. Now, as I said in the last episode, do we detail these houses a lot or not? And it was kind of a bit of a mixed response from you guys. And I agree, I think we should probably detail some segments a bit more heavily than others. I don't want to detail every single house to the absolute um, you know, highest measures because it's gonna really <laughs> slow down the project. It's gonna be a lot of repetitiveness. Um, and we're lucky enough that we do have these houses here for Mac Welsh and that's have already got um, generic default detailing inside them and, and they, they work really well they are a good level of detail so I'm happy to keep those in as they are I did use the prop tool um, to remove some of the um, assets and parts of some of the trees that are inside these are a little bit outdated and more vanilla which is obviously when the houses were first created so i've kind of removed some of those so we have got some more emptier looking gardens but you know just a few little additions like we're doing here on camera just really give that sense of detail and it's almost like personalizing each house to make it look like someone different lives there if everything was the same it just wouldn't really work for me and um that's again one of the things i wanted to try and get across um, in this episode and you'll see now this is giving you an example of the height terrain difference we've got to work with a bit later on on this park area the houses have got to be staggered across we've had to use some of the network um, network terraforming uh, parts here by Ironix just to try and raise up the terrain and make it a bit more easier to work with I, I was trying to combine both that and the terraforming tool to try and create at least a certain area where the land is a bit more flat because obviously when you're placing down some of these props if it's on a slight tilt you will probably get a very nasty looking effect because you'll end up missing half of the the prop to the uh, to the ground and terrain itself so that was something i had to overcome and you'll see that we do achieve that a bit later on now i wanted to try and rearrange these houses as you probably remember from the last episode i pretty much just whacked these down in sort of sort of certain areas i didn't really think about it in terms of placing them neatly and next to one another so i'm going to spend a lot of time as well during this episode just readjusting some of those bits i do cut out a lot of those aspects because it is quite dull to watch i didn't want to bore you with a lot of repetition um, and i'm using these beautiful hedges i really do like these hedges i've used them so much in this series but they just work so well the fact there's three different types of them as well combining each one together really does make a big difference and this is pretty much me just hiding away some of the ugliness of the terrain that we've got between the houses and where i want to put this park 
So you'll see that I've used that quite a lot, going back to the Monaco days, I guess, when I was using these buildings and plants and all sorts of stuff to try and hide some of the, the ugliness of the, um, the, the build itself, which we can't really do much else for. And again, using these network um, parts from Ronix really does help because it was able to allow me to place down things and make it look and work better. Without those, the terraforming tool is just not powerful enough to really allow that to work. So again, that is a, a big, big game changer for me in this series. I'd also just like to say a big thank you to everyone in the last episode as well. We had so many amazing comments. It's uh, so nice to, to read back and get your thoughts, your feelings and you know, just anything regarding these videos, whether you like it, you don't like it, what you want to see better or what you want to see next. It's just a great thing for me to have to improve the channel and, you know, give me ideas for the next build. And I did ask on Twitter and also the YouTube uh, channel to let me know your thoughts on what you want to see next. And we've got a long, long list now of new ideas, both related to the Isle of Wight and also just some UK traditional looking builds as well. So. If you want to get involved and throw your tuppence into the mix to find out what you know you want to build next, let me know in the comment section below. Let me know what areas of the island perhaps you want to see built next or just anything that you want to see in terms of a build because the list is growing and um, the series has got a long, long way to go. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Now this segment here, I actually really enjoyed this. I wanted to try and create a almost like a little car park for people coming to visit the park. It's quite a typical thing to see. And I thought the best way of doing that would purely just be a gravel car park. <laughs> I mean, it's not even a car park if you think about it. It's pretty much just a load of gravel dumped down where people can come and park their cars. It's quite a, a common way that the uh, UK creates car park spaces very quickly and obviously cost effectively as well. So I wanted to add that in there and I put a few cars in there to obviously show that it is a car park because otherwise it could just look like a, a bit of an abandoned land that's not being used and perhaps the story goes that it was at one point and now it's been turned into a car park for the, the park. But the park in general as you can see we are using these more updated and modern looking concrete pathways and I wanted to make the park, the, the park itself seem a bit more modern and quite recent rather than an old rundown park so that's why we went with these types of paths rather than going with the beautiful mac welshman rural pathways i thought this would be a nice change and i did i did think about the layout a few times on how i wanted to do so i was going to go with this sort of look and have to park in the middle of the circle but i thought i'd just be i thought i'd just go a little bit more simplistic and i think that in the end worked out much better than what i could have hoped for because it just works in my eyes. I didn't want to make it look too dramatic because it's only a small park area really here. Perhaps if it was there was more land around it, perhaps then it would have suited having a bit more of a crazy pathway or some sort of you know adaption in, in the build itself. But I think just one long path going all the way throughout here and then a few entrances from the main road and also this segment here as well. I thought that worked quite nicely and I do like these these fences they work really well for the build itself um i think they're more industrial but to me they look like quite good path path uh, sorry park um gates so they went in there and i wanted to also add benches and bins to you know create that park feel and obviously you know if this is going to be a a new park this is kind of the traditional way nowadays that parks are put together there's always a bench and a, a bin nearby for avoidance of littering so that worked out nicely and I wanted to also put concrete down for where these chairs are because that's kind of the more common sense way of doing it nowadays you used to have benches just plopped onto grass and the grass eventually becomes into you know dirt and quite worn out so I thought I'd put down the uh, the paths and create a little area a little slab for where these actual benches are sitting which I thought worked realistically well for the park itself, I mean, there's a lot of good assets on the workshop, as we all know, for park type of um, <laughs> of props. So, I firstly, I wanted to just put a few down. So you'll see I kind of skipped a bit of the camera time lapse here and just whacked down a, 
a number of the ones I wanted to use. And I think this is a good coverage. There's a few swings here for both older and younger children. There's a slide in the corner, climbing frames, a few picnic benches and a sand pit. That's quite, quite traditional for UK parks. There's not too much there that I would expect to see additionally. Um, perhaps if it was more of a upper class park or in a a uh, different location there might be a zip line or you know something along those lines a tunnel maybe a big bigger climbing frame um, but i think this was a good variance to add in there on a park and it's interesting as well to see the difference between parks from uk and american parks because they are quite dramatically different in, in these senses um, but i think this works well i also put a goal post down there as well i was thinking of putting a little football pitch in here but one the grass itself as you can probably see from some of these shots is not flat <laughs> so um it's probably not the best thing to have as a actual a football pitch in that sense but i thought i would put a goal post there just to add to the realism of it being a park and kids running around and enjoying themselves kind of quite traditional you expect to see a, a couple of football posts knocking around at most parks you go to I also wanted to try and create the foliage in a more realistic way as well. You'd imagine because the park is obviously higher up than these houses, you'd think that they would have some sort of a tree coverage to give them a bit of privacy because anyone walking across the pass, because it's higher up than the actual gardens, people could obviously see in. So you'd imagine that perhaps the council, when they built the park or Perhaps before the park was built, there was a tree, a tree line of some description going across to give that privacy between um, the park itself and obviously these people's back gardens. Um, and if that wasn't the case, you'd expect that perhaps the people in the back gardens, if they were bothered about it, would put trees in themselves. So I wanted to just to make things feel a bit more realistic and uh, yeah, in that sense, make it feel a bit more of the realism. Now this segment here, I wanted to add a little bit of field land around to sort of fill in this gap because there's a lot of space on the island that we need to fill with farmland. And I thought I'd just try a few little different techniques here um, to fill in these gaps between some of these housing estates and uh, the main roads, etc. So this is just purely me just plopping down some fields. It's not too much to talk about in that sense. So we put down a farmhouse though, so there is a bit of detailing going on here. Um, but again, we are still trialing with a few different techniques on how to make farmlands look realistic and also different. I'm trying to not do the same thing repetitively all the time. If I can kind of find four or five different methods of what works well, I think we can probably get away of just using those methods throughout the whole of the island. But I'm still trialing things. I'm still seeing what works, what assets are available. Um, obviously in an ideal world a some sort of a network farm would be absolutely amazing so we could really get away from these ugly squares which um, are not very common for the UK obviously they do work in other places and it's obvious why it's made or they're made like that on the workshop and in the game but you know for me personally that would be an absolute game changer for rural builds on the on the island and in the game in general so that'll be interesting to see. But um, whilst we're just watching this part of the video, let's um, just skip back to some of your comments in the last episode. First up, we have IWSRFC. When is Black Gang Chine and Robin Hill being made? Now, these are two areas that I really do want to work on. Certainly Robin Hill. If you don't know what Robin Hill is, it's, quite, it's kind of like an adventure playground, big open space with lots of things like toboggans and places to look around, mostly aimed for kids. Um, but I think that'd be a really cool build to do. I need to look on the workshop to see what sort of things we can use to build and make that work. So that's interesting. Black Game China as well is a very unique place, a very pretty looking place. So it's on my radar. It's on the list, as we mentioned earlier in the video, to work on. So we'll see how that goes. But it's definitely something I do want to work on. Peter Conway said, could you try some faded white lines for the cricket strip and boundaries? I think this would work a lot. And I agree, I think that'd be a really cool thing to add. If you recall the last episode, I did mention that there wasn't that many nice cricket um, assets on the workshop and could we find a way to make it look more realistic? So I think I will, Peter. I think I'll look into that and see how well we can do that and perhaps we'll add that in for another episode. 
Finally as well, a lot of you guys commented on the cinematics in first person, which I am really, really pleased with how they've been turned out. A big shout out to Press because without his recent build on the island, showing off how much better you can get these cinematics to look in first person really, really does make a huge difference. And I have been trying to do this in the past and there was a new technique that I learned on how to do so. And um, yeah, a big shout out to Prez as well because I know he's been doing some fantastic cinematics recently. If you haven't checked him out already, I'm sure you already have if you're following this series because you'd have seen his beautiful build in the previous episode. But if not, check him out because those cinematics he creates are sensational. And talking of cinematics, I also wanted to think of a few ways in which to fill out some areas that aren't residential, aren't roads, aren't car parking spaces. I wanted to find a few ways of doing a bit more foliage based detailing. Now I looked around certain areas of the UK in general, not just the Isle of Wight, but even in my local town. And there's a lot of areas where there is just a huge coverage of what I would class as um, shrubbery really. Um, lots of overgrown grass, weeds, not the sort of prettiness that you'd expect to see, but it's kind of just overgrown itself. It's kind of taken over this area. Um, and it's, you know, it's gonna be like that for a long time until perhaps the council wanna clear it up or something gets built on that. So I wanted to try and find a few ways of doing that. And I'm really pleased with the combinations I put together here, as you can see on camera. The combination of different types of grasses, all from the workshop, just add another level of realism to the builds i think rather than always having something that is functional these wastelands are almost similar to what i was going for here but more on a foliage based uh, level and i think having these sort of build parts on the builds just make things feel more lifelike and more homely you expect to see this sort of stuff in the uk everything isn't pretty and perfect and that's the sort of feeling i wanted to give off in this aspect of the build here. And another way to fill out these, these extra gaps in your build is here, for example, is a garage area. So for these houses here, as you can see, not many of them actually have the ability or facility to park their cars. And this is what is common in the UK. You'll end up having a, a back area where all these garages are, where people come and park their cars. They haven't got a driveway, but they've all got a garage where they can securely park their cars. And that's what I wanted to do here. And again, another way to fill out this emptiness. I didn't want to keep putting houses in everywhere because it's just not realistic and it overkills the population and the build. And it just looks good having this variance of different parts of a build. You know, you want to have your eyes taken away from the more mundane parts of the builds in the UK. I mean, these houses in themselves look sensational but combine them with something else that tells a different story it fills you with some sort of an understanding on what this area is like and if you lived here how your sort of day-to-day -day life would be collecting your car so again i wanted to create the realism both in terms of does this look realistic in terms of having a garage in this location which it does is it realistic in the sense of would this many garages be here and yes it would because the amount of houses i have got around here you would need to have this many garages. At first I was going to fill the whole area with garages, but it just it just didn't look realistic. There was too many garages for the amount of houses that would have needed to have a garage. So that's the reason I went with that. And then I wanted to also again tie into what we've been working on just slightly above these garages with this wasteland is do the same sort of thing here again on camera as you can see, but I wanted to also make it look a bit more of a rundown um, garage area like these garages have been here for quite some time this area here has been very left to the uh well the wildlife to um to sort of almost take over the land in the sense here I wanted to also create the the feeling of it's been you know not looked after it's just been left there to almost just slowly <laughs> waste away but people are still using it it's still functional people are parking their cars there so that's the feeling I wanted to get off here and we'll start putting down some of these extra bushes and also 
I um, put down a lot of the the road decals, which I think really did kick it into shape here. It just made it look a bit more realistic. And again, you know, what would be a UK back road or any road in general without some sort of road damage? It just works. Carrying on from the realism of this build, which is pretty much what this build is about, I'm hoping that's coming across in the video. It's not just me plopping down things willy-nilly, as we say here. It is a bit more of a you know a thoughtful structure behind it. And again here, you'll see I've actually upgraded some of these roads to the roads that accept car parking spaces on either sides. Because despite what I just said in the last part of the video in regards to the um, garages we put down, people will visit will need somewhere to park as well. So I thought I'd upgrade some of the, those roads. And I think that's a really, really cool way to add realism. You know, rather than having all of the roads the same size about parking, have a few little bits here and there, a little lay-by as we call it in the UK, where you can park your car or your friend can turn up and park on the street. Or, you know, when people come and deliver stuff, they need somewhere to turn off and sort of park up. So I thought that was a really cool thing to add. Add it again to the realism and um, yeah, let me know your thoughts on that. And we are now coming pretty close to the end of today's episode and you'll you'll notice there's been quite a lot built. Um, well, I say a lot built, there's been a lot detailed and sort of completed and ticked off on this build. You'll see I put down the farmlands. We decided in the end this time to go with these um, more boxier placements, but I think it works. We need to think of a few other ways to um, make things look more realistic. We'll probably do an episode purely on just putting down some farms and farmlands again at some point in the future. But like I said in the last episode, there is a really interesting project we're getting very close to working on. So please stick around because as I said last week, it's something that no one has done yet. And I think it's gonna be a really cool episode. It's gonna be really fun cinematics. I think a lot of you are gonna really enjoy the look of it and maybe you'll give it a go yourself we'll um we'll have to find out and see but that's possibly going to be even next episode or the episode after that we'll see how things go but we'll end with looking through some of these cinematic first person shots really really pleased at how this came out it's um yeah i think it just screams out what i was trying to achieve really really pleased let me know your thoughts guys what do you think to the episode today what do you want to see next let me know as well in the comments section below if you enjoyed the video please do hit that like button and do leave me comments as you are probably aware i do go through all the comments and i do reply to every single one that i <laughs> that warrants a reply check out the social media as well for screenshots and teasers on when i'm next going to be live streaming and if you want to support the channel further you can jump onto the patreon and you can now play on the save game from a tier two and above other than that, guys, thank you all very much. Have a good rest of your weekend. Enjoy your week, and we'll catch up next time. Thanks for watching, and all the best.